Iraq's chief military intelligence officer has a grave warning. He says that ISIS is planning to rebuild its terror operation from the rubble of its so-called caliphate. Communications show how senior ISIS members are planning to break prisoners out of jails in Syria and Iraq. And in Turkey, wealthy conspirators are returning and forming new cells. Sam Kiley brings us this exclusive report. Hidden among those fleeing the last stand of the so-called Islamic Caliphate are leaders who evaded prisons like these, taking refuge in Turkey. Flush with millions of dollars and driven by revenge, they're plotting mass jail breakouts to rebuild the terror network. These explosive warnings come from Iraq's veteran head of military intelligence in an exclusive interview with CNN. Those elements who are currently in areas in Turkey play a key role in the new effort to recruit fighters. Top-level leaders who fled secretly in the direction of Gaziantep and other areas are key funding members of the organization and they have vast amounts of money. They even have investments in Turkey. The general said that he handed a dossier of nine ISIS leaders to Turkish military officials in this room a month ago. We were shown, but not allowed to film, Iraqi arrest warrants for two of those men, which said that they are expert bomb makers and wanted for terror and mass murder. The warrants say they pose a great danger in the Middle East and to the West. Turkish officials told CNN that they're looking into the allegations. Iraq tracked and attacked former ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, forcing him from Iraq into Syria, where he was eventually killed in October. But the general warned that the ISIS threat remains potent. About 10,000 alleged fighters are now held in prisons guarded by the Syrian Democratic Forces. How long they can be contained is unclear, since Turkey's recent incursion into the area, where it considers the Kurdish elements of the SDF a terror group. The Trump administration has been widely criticized for withdrawing US forces who were working with the SDF from the border area. European forces have done nothing to help contain the potential threat here, and most refused to repatriate their citizens who joined ISIS. Turkish forces have rounded up dozens of alleged ISIS members, recently arresting 42 people allegedly involved in complex money transfers for the terror group. But Iraqi military intelligence believes that these prisons and others like it could be attacked at any time, funded by ISIS leaders living in Turkey. We have concluded that the real intention of ISIS is to begin a mission they're calling break down the fences, to storm jails inside Iraq and Syria to free terrorists. And what do you think should be done about them? There should be a large international effort to deal with this, because these criminals could escape camps and go back to their countries. They pose a great danger to countries in Europe, Asia and North Africa. In the nation where the terrorist caliphate first emerged, a warning that it still has the money and the intent to be reborn. Sam Kiley is here with me to discuss his exclusive piece. Sam, you, you were asking the chief military intelligence officer at the end there what can be done about this, and he said an international effort is required. But as you outlined there, it's, it's not exactly fertile ground for a concerted effort from all of these regional players. So what does happen? How can this tie be stemmed? Well, the first thing is that somebody's got to step into the gap left by the withdrawal or reduction in American forces there in terms of... And this would certainly be the position of the Trump administration, and I think he's got a lot of support from this, ironically, both from the Kurds, the Iraqis, and even the Turks, which is the European military could be doing a great deal more uh, in that area to secure, for example, those camps, 10,000 potential fighters in mm -hmm. uh, one prison, 70,000 women and children in another, an incubator, arguably, for future ISIS uh, youngsters, people who need to be rescued, effectively, mm -hmm. from, from what is terrorist grooming. Very little, if anything, is being done. And as a result of that, we're already seeing President Erdogan has started expelling people alleged with, to have ISIS contacts back to this country and others very much against their will. But there has not been a, a European response. And it's quite fascinating, given the level of threat, not just from terrorism, but from the mm -hmm. potential... Uh, uh, floodgates that uh, the Turks have threatened to open in terms of, 
of refugees being allowed to restart uh, crossing into Greece again. So there's an awful lot of interest that the Europeans should have in that environment. It's quite fascinating that they're being so hands-off. They've done everything uh, up until now entirely through the American prism. And just quickly, because we've, we've got to go, but is there any sign that they are trying to coordinate some type of response, that efforts are being made between any of these countries to come up with something? Your sort of time? Short answer is no. Mm -hmm. None at all. I mean, it's absolute, it is quite stark. I mean, the, the, the British have special forces on the ground working with the Americans, the Danes, the French mm -hmm. do too, but they've had to scale back operations as the Americans have. And at the moment, there is no, nobody stepping forward to secure these camps that are being guarded by Syrian democratic forces that are simultaneously being drawn off mm -hmm. to try to at least block what they would see as a Turkish incursion into their territory. Sam Carley, thank you very much for joining us.